Good afternoon. My name is David Plazas, the Opinion and Engagement Director for the USA Today Network Tennessee, representing six publications across the volunteer state, including the Tennessean in Nashville, the Commercial Appeal in Memphis, the New Sentinel in Knoxville, the Murfreesboro Daily News Journal, the Leaf Chronicle in Clarksville, and the Jackson Sun. And I'm here to talk to you about House Speaker Glenn Cassida, who has been in the news quite a bit over this past week. Uh, I want to start out with the conversation about an editorial that we jointly wrote as six publications, six editorial boards and editors, uh, top editors who wanted to basically give, send a message to Glenn Cassida that uh, you are not worthy to be speaker anymore after the scandal, scandals of this past week. And those scandals have included racy text messages with his former chief of staff, Kate Cothran. They have also included the allegations of eavesdropping of other legislators, which could be a federal crime. And they've also included a, a notion, a kind of a, a frat house type environment where people are unsafe and where bigotry is allowed to fester. I'll just read a few of the comments from the, uh, from the Tennessean uh, editorial, from the USA Today Network Tennessee editorial. And then if you have any comments or any discussions, uh, I'd love to read those out there and answer any questions that you might have. So as I mentioned, the headline of this is Glenn Cassidy not worthy to be Tennessee Speaker of the House. We expect more of our leaders. That is why they are leaders. But there's a problem on Capitol Hill. It is a problem where a few Tennessee lawmakers and staffers feel empowered to act in boorish, bad, and bigoted ways. The resignation of Speaker of the House Glenn Cassidy's Chief of Staff, Kate Cothran, on Monday after it was revealed that he had in the past sent racist, misogynistic, and homophobic texts, sometimes to the Speaker himself, shows that debauchery reigns in the Capitol. After the resignation, Cassidy said Cothran, who once described in a text a relationship as akin to father and son, had become a distraction. It is Cassidy's job to establish a respectful tone in the House for all members, staffers, and guests. Moreover, it is his job to ensure the Capitol is safe. And what we ended with essentially is that uh, we believe that a uh, call for resignation would fall on deaf ears, but make no mistake, the speaker no longer deserves a job and we're calling on legislative leaders to stand up for what's right and move in a better direction. And Democrats have moved in that direction, of course, and now some Republicans are moving in that direction too, which is a positive step forward. The Tennessee House of Representatives would be better served by another person as Speaker of the House. The goal of this is to start a discussion that has been picked up across the country. Most recently, I saw an article on the Washington Post where uh, this is not good for Tennessee. This is terrible news. You know, we have essentially the leader of the Tennessee House of Representatives that, uh, who has to show the highest level of character and has failed in that respect. Uh, one of the things that uh, we have done over this past legislative session is observe very carefully some of the decisions made. And obviously, this is a Republican-dominated House of Representatives. They certainly have the authority to pass many bills. They have the authority, but they also have to uh, set a high bar when it comes to conduct. And these are things that we've been dealing with for some time. Uh, we reported uh, many years ago the case of former legislator Jeremy Durham, who was expelled from the House. And he was expelled from the House after the Attorney General came out with a report showing about two dozen reports of sexual harassment against uh, the lawmaker, the former lawmaker. Uh, and uh, he was one of uh, the mentees of, uh, of uh, Glenn Cassida. And one of the things that we uh, learned from that experience is that the House didn't seem to be taking the sexual harassment claims very seriously. And now speak, former Speaker Beth Harwell started implementing some training. Sadly, this past session, one of the things our reporters, Joel Ebert and Natalie Allison, uh, who are on the Capitol, showed was that, that, in fact, many of these lawmakers were not taking this sexual harassment training very seriously. It was just a few minutes. Some were distracted on their phones. And obviously, we've also had the case of uh, Representative David Byrd, who has been accused by at least three women when they were girls of having been sexually abused by them when he was their coach. Uh, and he was protested throughout, and the reaction of the speaker was uh, essentially to try to uh, disrespect them or just discredit them. Uh, we have uh, one comment so far, so enough that is enough, Tennessee. Thank you very much for being on this, and we thank you for, for all who have joined uh, this particular broadcast. Uh, this level of responsibility is tremendous. The state constitution requires, obviously, that the Tennessee House and the Tennessee Senate uh, elect a speaker. They don't necessarily have to be of that house, but they have to be someone who can not only get the legislation through, and the number one task, of course, is to pass a budget, but also to set a high example. And we've been hearing from other legislators that that is very important to them, be it from uh, Governor Lee, who got a little bit of pushback from my, my colleague, uh, columnist Alex Hubbard, who basically said his response was too tepid. Uh, and, but we've also gotten responses from Lieutenant Governor McNally, who has uh, said that if he were a senator, if Glenn Castle were a senator, he would have asked him to resign. And we've had numerous, uh, numerous uh, headlines recently regarding the Cassidy incident. Uh, just uh, the last uh, few hours, 
Um, why, uh, Tennessee Democrats call for probe into eavesdropping, bugging accusations involving Speaker Glenn Cassida. Uh, we have uh, some Republicans call for Speaker Cassida to resign amid sex, sex scandal involving his office. Uh, quote, I have a problem with hypocrisy. Longtime Glenn Cassida friend calls for his resignation. And we have all sorts of different uh, links up there with reaction to this. This has been a story that has been fast moving. Now, when the editorial boards decided to work together uh, to put together this editorial, uh, we were going back and forth. What is it that ex exactly we want to say? And the main message was this is about character and this is about a failure of leadership. Uh, you know, we've been asked, you know, did you want to not call for a direct resignation? Obviously, we don't want him in the speaker's role, but we thought more importantly, it was up to our legislators to really make that push. This is not us just saying you have to resign because sometimes these things do fall on deaf ears. It's about sending the message that this is not acceptable. Now, there's the, also the other case that's been discussed quite a bit about the Justin Jones connection. He's the activist uh, who was arrested uh, allegedly for throwing a, a cup full of uh, possibly some liquid. Uh, he was accused of having some liquid in there into an elevator where Speaker Cassidy and other legislators were in. Uh, there was a situation about uh, potentially doctored emails. Uh, you know, he was banned from the Capitol. Justin Jones was banned from the Capitol. And there's the allegation that uh, former Chief of Staff Kate Cothran had uh, doctored a particular email, although some have said it might have been an IT mistake. But if that's the case, it was doctored. That makes this even more serious because Mr. Jones' uh, freedom was at stake. Essentially, his bond would have been revoked. Uh, we have uh, right now, as, as I continue to monitor this, uh, you know, happy to take your questions and at the same time any of your comments that we'd love to have to add to this conversation. Uh, you know, it's important. Uh, every two years, uh, the uh, House of Representatives uh, membership is up for discussion. Now, I'll read some of the comments that we've had so far in the editorial itself. Uh, Charlie Dyer says there's some Orwellian stuff going on in our General Assembly. The FBI needs to be all over this. There's a dystopian atmosphere of totalitarian rule in the People's House. And uh, Tracy Wiswell replied, the problem will fix itself eventually, but ne not nearly as fast as most would like or even find acceptable. We've had a steady increase in the number of women in Congress. When we reach the parity issue, it will be less relevant. Uh, given women seem not to get caught in scandals as often, it would be a shock to me to see the increase in women year over year to increase. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we've had some really, really interesting uh, uh, approaches. Now, one of the things that we have also uh, weighed when we were thinking about this, anytime we want to uh, take on or make a critical statement of a, of a legislator, especially someone at the high level that uh, Speaker Castaneda is in, is uh, what is the impact and what is the potential follow -up? And the reality is that we are doing our First Amendment responsibilities to send a strong message again that this is not acceptable and that uh, we feel uh, that the Speaker has, uh, has a role to basically set the tone the texts uh, that uh, uh, were found uh, between, and obviously we've, we've seen other news outlets also break this story, including uh, News Channel 5 and Phil Williams, but we wanted to, um, uh, as we started examining this, they were misogynistic, they included racist statements, uh, they included bigoted statements, homophobic statements that are simply just uh, beneath what someone at that level needs to make. And obviously there have been a lot of questions regarding the speaker and his relationship to, uh, to Kate Cothran. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did publish a uh, op-ed by Glenn Cassida. He had been responding to some coverage that he thought was unfair. And this was part of our mission as an editorial board to uh, publish diverse viewpoints. And I will say that we received a mixed reaction, a lot of it negative from people thinking that we should have never given a platform. Uh, we do feel that we, we try our best to provide a fair platform to the speaker. And if he's watching, you know, we certainly will invite him to, uh, to write a response as well. Uh, so far, we've received uh, responses and in, in statements uh, where the speaker has essentially denied what has gone on, although he has apologized for the conversations and called some of this banter locker room talk. And obviously, that has, in my estimation, and the editorial board's estimation, has been absolutely outrageous. Let's see if we uh, have any more comments here. Uh, Tucker Markham, Speaker Cassidy, spent 300000 via his PAC to get Speaker votes. He won't go out unless it absolutely is the last option. That's very interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, that whole question about uh, loyalty, you know, can he maintain his caucus together? If you were to listen to Representative Jeremy Faison of East Tennessee, he uh, indicates that, uh, and he uh, told, I believe, uh, Stephen Hale from, uh, pardon me, uh, Stephen Elliott from the uh, Nashville scene that, in fact, uh, know that he doesn't have the support of his caucus, and that's to be seen. Uh, we do plan to publish this editorial this Sunday, but this could be a fast-moving target, even though it's been published uh, digitally uh, uh, just a, a few days ago. Uh, but the question is, will the speaker still be there by Sunday? That's, that's a big question. Uh, he certainly has an incentive to keep his uh, position as best he can. One of the things that we are uh, looking at as well is this whole notion of the eavesdropping. Uh, our reporters 
uh, have, uh, have found or were told by uh, Kate Cawthron that, there were, that they were able to eavesdrop and that they were white noise machines that would limit uh, recording. And uh, this is a little bit uh, harrowing. It's not just, for, not just against Democrats, but against fellow Republicans as well. Um, it's important that there be an atmosphere of trust, obviously, and an atmosphere of collegiality, but at the same time, one in which uh, people feel like they're being spied upon and, and potentially spied upon illegally uh, is not acceptable either. Uh, we, uh, let's see, let's see, Lolita Hill says, Cassida, you are fit to govern our state. Um, I, I don't know if that was a sarcastic uh, one or a literal one. I would hope it's sarcastic. Uh, but uh, the reality is that this is, this is something that we should not expect. You know, one of the things that we, we really hope for is good conduct among all of our political leaders, our elected leaders. Uh, and um, in the past, and we have a couple more comments over here. Thank you, uh, Erica. So uh, we have... So it's Ricky Lee, it's like teenagers running the government. David E. Cook, you wouldn't know what his texts were if you would mind your own uh, damn business. Uh, Kimberly Stafford, oddly enough, he did not merely text himself. Uh, Jeffrey Withauer, I was very cynical about this, but it's looking like a number of Republicans are calling for his resignation as well, which shows bipartisan support. That's good. Dayton Hilton, thank you, buddy. Uh, you confirm Forrest Gump's truism, stupid is as stupid does. Uh, Jeffrey Withauer, what is the procedure in Tennessee for removing the Speaker of the House? Does it require impeachment like at the national level or can it be done just by the governor or what? Now remember that the executive and legislative branches are co-equal branches of government along with the judiciary. And you'll find that in the state constitution it very much mirrors the U.S. Constitution, at least this version that was approved in 1870. There, uh, used to be the original constitution, just a legislative and executive branch. So a speaker is elected, it can be any person, doesn't have to be a member of the House of Representatives, uh, but is elected for a two-year term. And there are rules in which a caucus could come together. Uh, they have to be in session, so right now they're out of session. So at least two-thirds of the House, or the governor certainly could convene a special session related to the speaker's future, and there uh, certainly could be a vote taken if enough members do agree with that. Uh, but it would have to be a, a question of consideration to uh, either remove uh, the speaker uh, for, uh, from his office and then replace him, the speaker pro tem. Uh, Mr. Dunn would likely uh, replace him or, or whoever else would, uh, uh, would, would be acceptable to the, to the majority of the caucus. Democrats and Republicans uh, both vote, but Republicans obviously have a, a supermajority in there, so their voices would be most heard in this. Uh, but, yeah, but the first step is to call back members into session, and that would require, again, at least two-thirds of the House of Representatives and uh, or uh, the Governor, uh, Governor Lee, uh, bringing them back. Uh, Governor Lee, uh, I think, did not want to have a drama-filled session. He came in with uh, an agenda that included uh, everything from uh, vocational education to uh, his big push on education savings account, also known as uh, school vouchers, that passed by one vote in the House, and that was extremely contentious. Speaker Cassidy had really pushed that. He got a lot of heat for holding the vote open, uh, although certainly people pointed out that uh, one of his predecessors, uh, Speaker Nafee, a Democrat, uh, would do that at least once or perhaps even more. Uh, and, uh, and obviously it was his prerogative to do so as people were basically going back and forth on these votes. Uh, but uh, you, certainly there was a lot of drama and this right after the session even adds that. It, it brings that uh, high up. Uh, you know, when it, when it comes to reporting on these particular things, so Cassandra Anello says, thank you for the investigative journalism. Your involvement has been the impetus for Kate resigning and pressuring Cassidy to resign. And I have to give a lot of credit to our reporting team, to Joel Ebert and Natalie Allison, uh, especially uh, Dwayne Gang, their editor. Uh, this was not an easy session for them and they were constantly under fire. And for a lot of these initial allegations, uh, there, was, so there was the pushback often that either A, it was fake or uh, you had liberal media bias. Uh, and, and, and yes, in fact, in the op-ed that uh, we published from Speaker Cassidy, we did not change his wording related to that. Uh, and that caused us a little bit of grief. You know, did we not support our reporters? Of course we do. Uh, we wanted to have the opportunity for Speaker Cassidy to speak for himself. Um, uh, and, and obviously I understand where people are coming from when it comes to that criticism. Um, so with regard to, again, to fitness, there's uh, more questions about that, about his fitness to serve. And when we talk about that, we talk about the, the aspects of character. You know, why is this so bad? You know, some people have asked on Twitter, I mean, is, is it just about the texts? You know, we've heard body language bef uh, before, as, you know, it's, 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 this, is, this is nothing. But in fact, it is, it is definitely something. When you set the example that it's okay to denigrate women or uh, African Americans, one of the, the Cade Cawthorne's texts called Black People Idiots used the N-word. 
there was the question about talking about sexual ex escapades, and there, then there was the admission of Mr. Cothran that uh, he had done cocaine uh, in his legislative office. And the question is, what's going on in Tennessee? How do we have an environment that is allowing for this to happen? Uh, this obviously in a private sector environment would be absolutely unacceptable and would be room for uh, having someone dismissed uh, potentially. Uh, but that's why uh, it's so important to tell these stories. And again, this has been a story that has been told by multiple members of the media. Uh, you know, I want to also give a shout out to Keel Hunt, who is our columnist, who wrote a piece uh, the other day that, talked, that called on Speaker Cassidy to resign. And he actually talked to uh, Jimmy Nafee, the former Democratic Speaker, about whether or not he had uh, done the things that, uh, that Cassidy had done. And, and Jimmy Nafee essentially said, that's a damn lie. Uh, and so when we're, we're talking about some of these things, it's really interesting to get this context. Now, Keel is a Nashville native uh, who used to work for the Tennessee and many years ago, worked for Governor Lamar Alexander's office and has had multiple positions in business in the community and now uh, serves as a columnist for the Tennessean in addition, in addition to being an author. And, and, uh, and interestingly, he wrote a book um, called Crossing the Isle. So showing when Democrats and Republicans really worked together, whether it was the Lamar Alexander administration or the Ned McWhorter administration. And these are lessons for how collegiality really worked back then, as opposed to now where just, we're in a hyper-partisan environment uh, where we're seeing potential crimes being committed. Um, obviously, this is, this is terrible for, for this state. I'm going to see if we have any other questions that come. Uh, Kimberly Stafford, let's try some honesty. The bar has been lowered significantly. Most Tennesseans no longer care about dignity and leadership. Um, you know, th that's, that's a, an interesting observation because some would say that based upon, you know, voting patterns. You know, who are we electing uh, to office and we're essentially, are we assenting as voters to this kind of leadership? Do we deserve the government that we get uh, because of our voting patterns? And obviously that, uh, that one can certainly argue that uh, if you wish. I, I would say that most people that I have encountered last year, uh, let me start with this, I spent a lot of time traveling across the state uh, from east to west during the 2018 midterm elections to talk to people about what was going on uh, in, in their minds. And I, I would say most people who I encountered at Rotary Clubs, at churches, at different groups, at debates and forums, really do want uh, leadership that is of high character and uh, where, where leaders will basically lead by example. You know, they obviously have their partisan agenda items, but they want people who are good people in office. And this is something that has shaken a lot of people to the core. Again, if you're just joining us, I'm David Plazas, the Opinion and Engagement Editor uh, for the USA Today Network Tennessee, representing six publications across the state of Tennessee. Uh, and again, this particular editorial uh, ran uh, across the state uh, digitally uh, and uh, will eventually be in print, but the, the whole purpose behind it was to send the message that by these actions, by these admissions, by these texts, by these investigations, which are getting worse and worse, uh, Speaker Glenn Cassida is not worthy of his post as Speaker of the House, and we certainly urge legislative leaders to do all that they can to replace him. All right, we are probably coming on the end of our time. Uh, so I will thank you very much. If you wish to reach me, you can find me on Twitter at David Plazas. You can email me at dplazas at Thank you so much for your readership and have a great day.